Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be putting together a boiler feed line for a hydronic heating system. I'll bring you in a little bit closer so I can show you how I'm going to put it together and then at the end of the video I'll explain the function of each part. Alright, so the direction of flow is this way. We're going to start with an isolation valve, goes into a backflow preventer, onto our bypass, which bypasses the pressure reducing valve, isolation valve on each side, union to service, and then into a pressure gauge and another isolation valve. I'll explain the function and purpose of each of these fittings at the end of the video. Well guys, here you have it. So this board's ready to be installed on location. We're replacing a boiler in a couple of weeks here and this will just be installed prior to make the replacement that much quicker and a lot more smooth. So we have our isolation valve. This will be your domestic water coming into the, the system or into the boiler. Um, so isolation valve right here, we're sitting at probably about 60 PSI. It goes to a backflow preventer. This stops any of the water from the boiler system to come back into the potable water. You do not want that to mix. So there's a check valve here, a relief port, another check valve. And if the pressure was ever to be exceeded on the boiler side higher than the domestic side, the check valve would stop that. If this check valve was to fail, the second check valve, it'll actually pour out of the bottom here as a safety device. If that's still to fail, there's another check valve here as well. Uh, very important device. This is a reduced pressure backflow preventer is what it's called and you have to be certified to actually test these and put them into service. There is no union here to service this and that's actually law in our jurisdiction so that it deters anyone else from servicing these except someone that actually has their ticket. We go over here to our bypass which would be in the closed position and goes over to a pressure reducing valve. This one does have a union, so we have to replace this, we can. This is currently set for 15 PSI. We actually have to have 18 at the building we're at, and I'll show you how to increase pressure on this or reduce it as well. I'll bring you in a little closer for that. So when we put this boiler back into service for the first time, we have to fill the entire system. It can take a long time, especially through the pressure reducing valve. That's what the bypass is for. So we can open this up here. It's a half inch feed line and it'll fill the system at a reasonable rate and we can close this off and then this will do the rest. We come over here to the gauge which is very important. Uh, there will be a gauge on the boiler itself but I always like to put two gauges so that we can compare both readings just in case one gauge is faulty. 
Kind of a tip here is when we do put the pressure to the lines, we close this valve off, we take out the gauge, open this valve to purge any air that's in this riser, and then put, close the valve, put the gauge back on, and then you can open it again. But purging that air, you're gonna get the most accurate reading. If you find that your gauge is bouncing back and forth, it's usually that's air trapped in this riser here. It can be other things with the boiler, but a very common simple fix is just purging that air. And then we have their final isolation valve. So let's come in a little closer and I'll show you how to adjust the pressure of the pressure reducing valve. First step is to remove the top portion here just by unthreading it. There's a lock nut which holds this threaded portion in place. So you just back this off a little bit. So you can see if I turn this tag here, you can see it's set to 15 PSI and it has a range of 10 to 25 PSI. This pin here removes, this would push pressure on the device to, to actually let water flow through. Now you go back to this part that you unthreaded and with this loose, if you turn it clockwise or in, it increases pressure on the system. There's a slot in this threaded portion. That's what I'm using this as a key. And if you turn it out or counterclockwise, it reduces pressure to the system. So you can go all the way down to 10 PSI if you have to, or up to 25. So I'm gonna leave it pretty much where it was. And then when the pressure is actually on the system, I'll adjust it at that point. When you're, when you're done at adjusting it, you just simply tighten up the, I'll just spin this so you can see it. You tighten up the locking nut, just snug. You drop the pin back in and you tighten this guy down. And it's just simple as that to adjust your pressure. Well guys, I hope this video was informative and like always, if this video helped you out, liking, commenting, subscribing is always greatly appreciated. Till next time.